All right, some major news as we head to the end of the NBA season and into the playoffs. Potentially a major shakeup in the Eastern Conference playoffs. One of the best players in the league, my man Joel Embiid, expected to return this week for the Philadelphia 76ers, the reigning MVP who was on an absolute tear before going down with a left knee injury on January 30th, has missed nearly 30 games now, but could find himself at 100% heading into the postseason and really wreak havoc on the Eastern Conference. Now, Embiid was having a monster season before going down, playing in 34 games, averaging over 35, 11, and 5.5 per game this season. He was on an absolute tear. And look, I've had my real major criticisms about Embiid, but the last two seasons for him have been massively transformative. Now we can talk about the playoff struggles. Him and the Sixers have yet to get past the second round of the Eastern Conference playoffs, but there's been a lot of bad breaks, a lot of super unreliable teammates, but now we find ourselves with potentially a fully healthy Joel Embiid and him and Tyrese Maxey, the favorite to win the most improved player in the NBA this season, could tend to be a deadly combination in the playoffs. Now, the Sixers went just 11-18 and 18 without Embiid so far and found themselves falling all the way to the 8th seed in the Eastern Conference. They were the 3rd seed before Embiid got hurt and it really took a major toll on this team. And the thing in the East is, it's very interesting here. Now, they're a game and a half back of the Heat for the seven seed, but they're just two games back of the Pacers for that six seed that'll get you out of the play-in tournament. That's big. You don't want to be in that play-in tournament, but it's going to take a lot for them to find themselves out. Nobody's really playing bad. Six and four, six and four for everybody. Sixers have been four and six, but if they get Embiid back for these final seven, maybe six games last two weeks of the season, maybe the Sixers can win out. The schedule's not super difficult. They do have the Thunder uh, on Tuesday in Philadelphia, but the big game is where we're probably going to see him beat. I don't think we see him Tuesday. We see him Thursday in Miami. That's a major game. Sixers win that game, then they're right there to potentially host that first playing game or maybe catch Indiana for that six seed to get out of the playing game. Now, the NBA is licking their chops at the potential return of Embiid, and maybe they're going to make sure the Sixers are the eight seed so they wind up playing the vaunted Boston Celtics in the first round of the playoffs. There's a lot of playoff history between these two teams. There's a lot of wins for Boston and no wins for Philadelphia. More like a lot of heartbreak, a lot of seven-game series, a lot of disaster. But the Celtics have been pretty much wire-to-wire -wire as the best team in the Eastern Conference this year. And nobody felt any real threat to this Celtics team. But with the potential return of a healthy Joel Embiid, in the first round, the Boston Celtics might have their handfuls. And the Sixers are a better team than when Embiid went out. They acquired Buddy Heald at the trade deadline. I think that's an upgrade to help this team. Now, obviously, we talked about the record, how they've struggled and haven't been great. But I still think it's a better team. It's really hard to replace a player of the quality and caliber of Joel Embiid. He's a top three player in the NBA. And he was playing like a clear and a way MVP before he went down. So it'll be very interesting to see what this kind of matchup, how things are going to shake out here. I think the Sixers could be a really dangerous team. Maybe they get that seven seed, you know, they get the seven seed, they beat Miami in the first game, but I don't think they match up super well with the Heat. And we all know about the zombie Heat. The Heat will find a way to get themselves into an Eastern Conference Finals if they can, but they match up with the Milwaukee Bucks team. Milwaukee got no defense. They got no size. They got no answer for Embiid. Could the Bucks get bounced early once again? And then we're talking about Giannis Adenokounmpo. What's he going to do? Could he be out the Dame Lillard experience? What's going on here? Now, other seeds, could they get into that six seed and they get into that four matchup with probably Cleveland? It's a half a game up on the Knicks, but Cleveland's falling apart. They really haven't been great since the All-Star break. And the Knicks, Jalen Brunson, those boys are hooping right now. Tough loss to OKC the other day, but still really strong for them. So if they get all the way up into that six seed and then they get Cleveland as the uh Four matchup. I mean, that 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 could be or in the three matchup. That could be a really really good break for them. But really interesting things at play. I think 
for the move into the NBA playoffs. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do the Sixers have a chance to shake things up with the addition in Joel Embiid? Or are they going to be one and done? Maybe don't even make the playoffs. Can't get out of the play-in tournament. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you haven't already, drop a quick like on this video. Hit that subscribe button. Subscribe to the channel. We got new sports content every single day. If you want to support the channel more, sign up for a channel membership. You get access to exclusive videos. We're slowly building up that catalog. Help support me. Allows me to keep making this great content for you guys every single day. Again, like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see y'all tomorrow.